And welcome back to KPRC 2 News Today at 10. Owen and Sophia with you. Word's been going around about a mysterious respiratory illness that is hitting our four-legged friends. Yeah, so what is the cause of this? And should you be worried at home for your own furry friend? To get the answers, we called in celebrity veterinarian at Houston's own Dr. Aziza Glass with Calm Veterinary Hospital. Hello. Doctor, always a pleasure. Yes, thank you so much for and having we, me again. We just want to let everyone know, too, you are a mom, a grad of Prairie View A&M University, that's and you right. went to HSPVA. Yes, yes. You're so a I hometown am, hero. I really am through and through Houston born and bred, and, and I love it. me some H-Town. <laughs> I didn't appreciate it until I moved away, but, right. but I'm back. Interesting how that works sometimes, <laughs> right? Home, right? Well, and you're, and you're back with this expertise for our pets, our, our four-legged yes. family members. This is a mystery illness, and you said, uh, how, about how long ago did we start getting rumblings of this? Well, we've been kind of hearing things from our colleagues, veterinarians across the country, about something that was going on with dogs dogs that were coughing, having coughs that were lasting for months, but coming up negative on our respiratory panels or any of the tests that we had available to us. And now it seems as though we have more um, more cases like that. Mm. And it's kind of sounded the alarm and a lot of scientists and veterinarians are working really, really diligently to try to figure out what is this new mystery illness. Yeah, because I think that's the, the hardest part is you bring your pet in and you think maybe we'll get, we'll get answers, we'll get medicine, but the testing, it's not really testing positive for a specific um, virus or Correct. ailment. Correct. And the good thing is that we're able to rule out what it isn't, right? So mm. that also helps, uh, especially, and that's why I tell people if you do have a dog that you are suspicious of having this, please go to a veterinarian, call them ahead of time so that they can make the necessary preparations. But um, also, please do the different respiratory testing so that we can once again get data. Because every single test, whether it's positive or negative, how uh, they respond to different medications is going mm. to help us help the other pets. Helps the general community exactly. kind of try to start understanding what this is. So you talk about symptoms, what are we looking for in our dogs, what kind of behavioral changes or things that we're watching out yeah, for? Yeah, so things that are gonna be very common with respiratory illnesses like a cough, nasal discharge. Sometimes you, they can uh, seem very lethargic. You can even have eye discharge. Not so much sneezing, but maybe. Mm -hmm. And the severe form can actually develop into pneumonia. And there have been some dogs that have died from this mysterious illness. So it can get pretty serious. If, I'm, I'm sorry, if, if, if a dog, let's say a dog does pass, you, you wouldn't know though either way, right? Other than this pneumonia would come out of, maybe out, not out of nowhere, but it might start small and then progress. Exactly, exactly. And so our veterinarians are relying on the latest uh, information as available to us. We are definitely collaborating with each other across the country and different message boards and things like that yeah. to try to figure out what has been the best uh, medication protocol, what are other things like making sure that your pet is up to date on vaccinations to minimize the occurrence that something else could piggyback and complicate things. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, yeah, we really are kind of thick and quick on our feet right now, which is, you know, not abnormal for veterinarians. No, for <laughs> sure. And, and there's dogs that are maybe more at risk than other dogs? Yes, absolutely. So just like what we experienced with COVID-19, respiratory diseases are gonna be spread by the air and by aerosol drops, droplets. So really any areas of high dog traffic is going to put your dog at an increased risk of exposure. So doggy daycares, grooming facilities, boarding, which is unfortunate, right? Because uh -huh. we're starting to learn a lot about this and this is the prime time for people to be boarding their pets. Right. So you mm -hmm. really just have to do your best. I don't want people to panic. I just want them to be prepared so that they're not um, kind of being reactionary, they're having the precautions and they have a good plan moving forward. It sounds like like it's not something you want to wait on because maybe you've said, oh, the, the dog's had a kennel cough before, whatever you call it, and, right. and I'm used to hearing this, but maybe with the illness going around, we want to take our pet in sooner? Yes, absolutely. And then also, like I said, once again, make sure that your pet is up to date on vaccinations. So things like board, the Bordetella vaccine, things like the canine influenza. And at Calm Veterinary Hospital, we already carry those things. And we also have same day appointments as well for people that are very interested and concerned about right. whether or not their pet may already have this disease. Yeah. Okay, doctor, where can they reach you? Um, a website or a phone number? Yeah, so you can give us a call at 832-662-2956. Um, our website is www.cawlmvet.com 
or comvet.com. And you can also book your appointments online through our website or just give us a call directly. And really quickly, I do want to say you were on Nat Geo Wild's <laughs> Vet School docu series and on Disney <laughs> X. I was. Roman yes. to the Rescue, the yes. first African American adult host veterinarian yes. on Disney. Yes. XD. That's amazing. How did yes. you get into show business? We're kind of going to do a hard <laughs> yeah, job. <right>? Yeah. <laughs> we want to know this. We want to let you go with that. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, it kind of started with my days at HSPVA. I, uh, and be, before that, I was not a stranger to being on stage. And now my audience, instead of it being people in a blacked out right. <laughs> auditorium, <laughs> it's now through the camera lens. But I want to just say that the, um, that I think my comfortability with being on stage really translated through the camera. And it, I didn't realize how rare of a gift that is for somebody to be in a STEM heavy field like veterinary medicine to be able to kind of uh, cross the borders in that kind yes. of way. But I really enjoy it. And um, I'm waiting for the next opportunity, the right opportunity to come my way. And would you recommend theater to kids who maybe even aren't, uh, oh, I'm a little nervous to get on stage, oh, but there yes. are benefits, right, to yes. going through and forcing Absolutely. yourself to do it? Absolutely. I'm, I'm a, a big, big proponent of the arts in general. So I tell people that I'm not a STEM advocate, I'm a STEAM advocate, because that A is for the arts. Yes. Okay? Hey. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's and I beautiful. think that the arts provides the avenue for you to be creative, for you to think on your feet, for you to always be a little bit more empathetic, and, and just so many things with the arts, whether it's visual arts, music, or dancing, or acting. Um, and, yeah. and I know that I have pulled on those skill sets throughout my time as a veterinarian, even on TV. Because yeah. <laughs> you said like before, you're thinking on your feet in so many ways, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. That helps you, that's huge. All right, Dr. Aziz Class, thank you for thank being you. here. Thank you for having me, and you know, I'll keep you updated on the latest. Okay. Please do, yes, of it's course. always good to see Can't you. Can't wait to it's have very you back. Important.